Well hello Internet and welcome to part 3 of my Arduino video tutorial series. In this one tutorial I'm going to show you how to make both a proximity sensor as well as a piano. This tutorial is a combination of code, a couple little slides, and circuit diagrams of course. As well I am going to be using components from a kit that I have in the description and I have a lot to do so let's get into it. Okay, so to make a proximity sensor, I'm going to be using a ultrasonic sensor module, and the one I'm specifically using is the one I mentioned previously, and it's going to be accurate between 2 to 400 centimeters, and I'm going to write all the code here for you, and the code's also in the description. And basically, the way that it works is you are going to activate or send a pulse to the trigger pin for 10 microseconds, and it will then send a frequency that is going to be an 8-cycle burst, and that's that's going to come out of one of these little speakers you see here and then it's going to turn that backwards that after it sends that frequency it is going to bounce back and it is going to receive that frequency once again and then from that it's going to be able to measure the distance by how quickly the signal bounces back. And basically the frequency is sent by converting changes in a current which interacts with a magnet to cause the diaphragm which is like a flexible type of film to vibrate which is going to create sound waves and then whenever we turn the sound waves and they sort of bounce back what you're going to have is we are going to convert those sound waves back into a current so it's going to do it basically in exactly the opposite different way. So now what I'm going to do is show you the actual circuit working and then after that I will show you all the code that makes it work. And here is our ultrasonic sensor module and VCC is going to go to power on the board. Trig is going to go to port 11, echo to 10. I'm going to start off by connecting to the 5 volt on the Arduino and then that's going to connect into the power source on the board and then I'm going to go from ground and also set that up on the board. Then you can see that I'm putting the LED pins in the 3, 5, and 6 ports on the Arduino board. And it sometimes helps to look at the side of the Arduino instead of looking at it downwards to make sure that you got everything in the right ports. Then I'm going to go from 11 port on the Arduino over into the trig on the mod module that we have right here and then once again for the echo I'm going to go from the 10 pin over into the echo on our module again. And as you'll see after I get this plugged in, as I move my hand closer to the sensor module, the lights are going to come on, and then as I move them away, they're going to go off. So now I'm going to jump over and write all the code to have everything here work. All right, so now you saw the circuit working, and now let's write the code. So basically, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create an easy way to identify the pins that we're going to be using. So I am going to go and get the trigger pin and assign it to pin 11, as you saw previously. And then I'm also going to assign our echo pin to the 10 port. All right, and we're going to use the serial monitor. It's also going to print out on the screen the distance that my hand is from our ultrasonic sensor module, but need to do a couple things first. I want to designate which pins are going to be used for output and input reasons. So our echo pin is going to be used for input and then our trigger pin is going to be used for output. So let's go and designate that trigger pin and this is going to be output. All right, and what else do I need to do? Well, I'm going to light the LEDs as you saw, so I'm going to also set both of those for output. So three, and that's going to be an output pin, and then I also set the pins four, five, and six. And as you saw, these are going to light up one by one depending upon how close my hand is to the sensor. Then down inside of our loop, as we loop, the trigger pin is going to send an 8-cycle frequency, and we are going to turn it on and off. So to do that, I'm going to say digital right, trigger pin, and low to turn it off. And then I'm going to delay a couple seconds, so microseconds of 2. And then I'm going to do this three times. So like this, and then this is going to be set for high, or it's going to be on, and this has to be set 
for 10 microseconds, and then we will turn it off once again. Well, I don't need this part right here because that's up here. This is obviously a loop, so it's gonna do it over and over and over again. Then what I need to do is get the travel time by playing the sound and then receiving it. So duration, this is gonna be the duration or period from which the signal was sent. And then, so it's gonna go outwards, it's gonna hit an object and it's gonna bounce back. We need to figure out what that duration is. And to do that, we are going to use a function called pulse in and pulse in turns a pin on and then waits for a certain period of time from it going low to high. And then it's gonna return that period in microseconds. So I'm gonna say that my echo pin is high. And then what I'm gonna do is convert that time into centimeters. I'm gonna create a function that is gonna do that for me. So this function is going to be called microseconds to centimeters. So let's do a long here and microseconds to centimeters. And I sort of took some of the code from that kit that I talked about previously and then changed it up to make it work for my way of thinking. So it made a little bit more sense to me. So this guy is going to get it long and calculate this. And how it's going to calculate this is the speed of sound is 0.0343 centimeters per microsecond. So we are going to take the duration that was passed inside of there but also we have to think about the fact that we are going to be getting back both the time that it took to get to the object and then the time it took to get back. So we're gonna divide whatever the duration is by two and then multiply that times 0 0.0343 and then return that. So that is how we are going to be able to calculate that. All right, so that's gonna get passed back into the duration. So then what we can do is go distance is equal to microseconds to centimeters and there we are and we are going to pass in duration into that of course and then i want to output some information in our serial monitor so that we can also see the exact centimeters and such and not completely rely 100 percent based off of what the leds are doing so we'll go print line and distance, and then we will output that in the serial monitor. All right, so now we have to handle the code for when to turn the LEDs on or off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, if the distance is less than 20 centimeters, then in that situation, I wanna turn on the first LED. So I'm gonna say analog right, and it's at the three pin and uh, 91, 0.5 is going to be enough to not blow out my LED. So that's what I'm gonna put inside of there. And I can say else, if not, then I wanna turn off my LED. So as I move towards the LED, it'll turn on. As I move away from it, it will turn off. So I just go three and zero, and there we go. And then I can do this for the other LEDs that we also have connected. So if it's, let's say 15, and then let's do another one for um, 10 maybe. So there we go. So they're gonna turn on and off. And then of course I need to change this from three to five and throw this to five and then change this to, whoops, turn this to, this was pin six and then this to pin six. And there we go and I have everything set up here. And I'm actually going to connect the Arduino here so you can see what's going on in the serial monitor. I know that you saw previously what happened. And let's compile it just to make sure I didn't make any, yeah, look at that, I made an error. All right, so what was my error that I have here? Whoops, this is long D. All right, got that set. Oh, I forgot to go and put in two more variables inside of here, silly me. So we'll go long and duration and distance also okay let's compile it again just to make sure i don't have any errors doesn't look like i do so then let's upload our sketch 
and everything looks like it's working good and I can open up my serial monitor here and you're going to see distance however as I move my hand closer and closer and closer and closer you're going to see that the number gets much smaller right, and that's accurate within like three centimeters all right so cool stuff and now what I'm going to do is jump over and show you the circuit that we're going to use to create a piano you can see right here all the pins I'm going to be using. I'm going to have the two pin go to the passive buzzer, the ground pin, and then the pins 13 through 7 are going to the switches. So the very first thing I'm going to do is connect the ground pin to the board. I am then going to connect pin 2 to our passive buzzer, and then I'm going to set it up with pins 13 through 7 going to all the alternate sides of our switches and connect the last pins into our switches and then of course go over and connect our Arduino and we will be ready to play. And here are all of the notes we can play. And now I will play a song. And now I'll write some code. Okay, so now you saw how awesome I am at playing the piano and how our circuit is designed. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to designate that any place in the code where the variable that we define here, like note C5, is placed in our code, that I wanted to instead have it replaced with this uh, integer that we have here, which is going to represent the different tones we want to be able to play. So I have seven of them, so let's go and create all those, and it goes C, D, E, F, G, and then A, B, of course. So A and B, and you can put any notes in here you want. So this is 523, this is 587, 659, 698, 784, 880, and 988. Okay, so we have those set up. Now I'm going to define some constants that are going to represent the ports that are going to be associated with playing these notes. So integer and C5 is going to be equal to port seven. And then I need to do this for all of our other different ports that we will be using. So once again, we're just gonna label these exactly like we did previously. And if at any time I'm going too fast here, just hit pause on the screen or you can get the code in the description. So then this is seven, eight, and nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Then I'm also going to come in here and reference our buzzer. So constant int uh, buzzer. And this is going to be, of course, the passive buzzer that it is going to be attached to, and that is going to be in port two. And the passive buzzer, again, is gonna receive an AC current, and the frequency provided is gonna determine the tone it plays, like we saw with our ultrasonic sensor before. And then inside of setup, I need to configure the pins that are gonna be connected. Maybe you wanna do something with the serial monitor, I didn't. Uh, maybe for homework you can go and output the different uh, notes that are being played as it goes along, whatever you'd like. So then I'm going to say pin mode and C5 is going to be used for input. And then I need to do that for all of my other notes. So I can just go in here and change these real quickly. All right. So after I have those set up, then I'm also gonna set up the input pins to receive input. And to do that, I go digital right and C5 and input pull up. And if there's anything that doesn't make any sense, of course, watch the previous tutorials and everything will make sense then. And then again, I need to do this for all of the different notes that we have. And that's all that I need to do for our setup. Now, down inside of the loop, what I'm going to do is whenever a switch is pressed, I need to generate the designated tone through the buzzer. And if no switch is pressed or no, pre no switch is being pressed any longer, I need the, to uh, stop the generation of the square waves so that no, we stop hearing sounds. So to do this, we go wow, digital, read, and then C5 is the specific guy that I'm going to be referencing here. And as long as that 
is low, which means it is being pressed on. I need to say that I'm gonna call tone for our buzzer, and I want to play this note. So C5, and that's it. And then I need to do that for all of these other guys. So let's just come in. And then all I need to do is change this to D, change this to D, and then do that for all of the other different notes that we have. F, G, and then A, and B. Okay, and I have all those, but we need to handle whenever nothing's being pressed. And in that situation, we'll just say no tone, and that's going to reference our buzzer. Save that and we can compile it just to make sure I didn't make an error. And of course I made an error. I didn't, what did I do? Not designate the buzzer. Oh, I called it buzzer with a lowercase b. So let's make it an uppercase b and let's compile it. And there you go. And you know that if I run it or upload it to the Arduino that it is going to allow you to play music. All right. So and if you guys have any trouble, of course, just go and get the code that's in the description is completely free. And also, just like this whole entire tutorial was created by you guys, if you want to see something specific, put it in the description and I will get to it as quickly as humanly possible. Of course, we're at the beginning stages of this, of this tutorial, so try to keep the examples a little bit more simplistic and very likely then you will see the whatever you asked for very soon in this tutorial series. And like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.